Okay, so after they gave me the okay to get off of the monitors, um, I was like in heaven because I would be able to walk around and get things going even faster. So I did just that. I walked around the labor and delivery unit um, a few times and, um, you know, the contractions are getting more and more intense. We went back into the room. I got on the ball for a little bit and I was checked. Yeah, honey. That's right. Do you want more? Yeah. Here you go. So, um, I came back, got on the ball, I was checked, and around, it was about probably, I want to say noon time, um, and granted I had gotten to the hospital at 6 o'clock in the morning that day, so it was already noon time, and they decided to check me again, and I was already 7 centimeters dilated, which was awesome progression, especially considering that I was doing it with no medication. But at seven centimeters, I started noticing that the pains were getting just really intense, to say the least. Um, I got in the shower again because I remembered being in the shower at home and the bath at home had helped so much that I just wanted that relief again. So I got the, in the shower and it helped, but I was in so much pain that I literally was telling Arturo, I'm dying, I'm going to die, I need help. The contraction pains had changed significantly. Like I was having complete back labor. Did y'all hear that? That was Ariana. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Baby girl, what are you doing? You tooting? <laughs> um, I literally have the iPad resting right next to her. <sighs> yeah. That's my little princess for ya. Anyway. Um, so I got out of the shower after like telling Arturo that I was dying and that I needed an epidural. He was like, okay, let's have them check you to at least see where you're at. And I was like, no, I need the epidural now. Get me the epidural now. They came in and they checked me, and I was only 8 centimeters dilated. I mean, I don't want to say only, I had gone 8 centimeters all natural, like with nothing um, other than just walking, being in the shower. I mean, I was so impressed with myself, but I knew at that point I was exhausted. I had gone so many hours in labor and so much pain that I needed some help in order to get through the next phase of labor. Um, and I'm really glad that I did because I got the epidural at 2 o'clock in the afternoon after screaming for it and it wasn't until 6 o'clock in the evening that I was fully dilated. Now I think um, the epidural definitely did slow things down but I, I, needed, I needed that break. I really was mentally and physically drained. Um, when, at 6 o'clock when the doctors said that I was fully dilated and that I was ready to push, I was excited because I thought, you know, it would happen right away. That was negative. <laughs> um, I started pushing and after a while of pushing, I realized that they would have me turn on my sides because Ariana's heart rate would decelerate really, really low. And... I was scared because I remember with Jackson, one of the reasons why I had to have an emergency C-section was because his heart rate was decelerating. And um, I literally was pushing for two hours and 16 minutes. And the doctor, after two hours, the doctor was like, okay, we're really trying to get you to have this baby naturally. Like you're so close, but her heart is decelerating. And if you can't get her out, we're gonna try the vacuum we can't get her out, if you can't really push with all your might, we're going to have to have another C-section. I literally, like, that made me 
so scared that I had gone through all of this to have another C-section that I pushed with all of my might. And as soon as her head came out, I, I mean, it was just, you feel relief when, because again, the epidural, it relieved some of the back pressure that I was having, but it didn't really take completely. Um, that's just an FYI for people out there that are considering whether or not they want to get an epidural. Um, it didn't really take for me completely. Um, so yeah, uh, her head came out and they were like, okay, stop pushing. I was like, no way. I pushed so hard um, that I tore. I have a second degree tear. And I was so excited to have my little girl. They put her right away on my chest and I was just elated. Like I've never felt so much joy and accomplishment like I literally felt like I had run a marathon and I was so proud of myself and I was just crying I was so happy and yeah and sure enough Ariana had her cord wrapped around her neck just the way her brother did only hers was once um it was only wrapped once as opposed to Jackson I think it was a couple of times and it was really tight um so yeah, I had my successful VBAC and I'm so happy. I I mean, I wouldn't change not one thing about my labor. Some might say, why go so far without getting a, an epidural and only to get it after? But I honestly, I got to experience what real labor pains were like with nothing. Um, I did what I felt was best for me. And... I can, I, I mean, I recommend that to any woman planning her birth. They say make birth plans, do all of these other good things, and it's great to plan ahead, but you have to go in with an open mind and know that while it's all great to be informed and knowledgeable, sometimes things just happen and you kind of have to go with the flow. So I'm so happy that things turned out the way I really wanted them to. So yeah. All right, guys, if you guys have any questions um, regarding my birth story, uh, be sure to leave a comment below and I'll be sure to answer. All right, adios.